chapter 14, starting with verse 10. I'm going to read, go ahead and read these verses that we're going to get into today and we're going to discuss it. It says, And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid, and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt with us, or thus with us, to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than we should die in the wilderness. Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. And the Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me? Speaking of the children of Israel, that they go forward. But lift thou up thy rod, and stretch forth thine hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Amen. 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 we we'll talk to you today about going forward. we we'll talk to you today about going forward in our, in our theme this whole uh, January been uh, maturing, it's been growing, it's been oh, growing up, leaving all that mess behind from 2022. We gave the whole month of rest in January. We talked about getting your foundation made right in January for the whole year to get your Bible reading going, getting your, your prayer time going, getting those things done before things got busy. And already next month, Valentine's Day is upon us. You know what I mean? The holidays are already starting. You know what I mean? Uh, it's time to go out and buy stuff for somebody else. I don't, I don't know. That's how we celebrate, I guess. Anyhow, we get to verse 10. It says, <clears throat> And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out, to the Lord. So, here's the thing. The children of Israel were already free from their slavery. In this moment in time, they are at the end of leaving Egypt. They've come up out of Egypt. I'll explain a little bit. They've come up out of Egypt. Don't want to be like Paul, just assume you already know the scriptures. And, and the Lord has given them commandments to go and camp out in this particular place because it looks like you're going to be trapped in a corner uh, with the Red Sea at your back. And you try to come out, there's going to be only one way out. And Pharaoh's going to come in and he's going to camp in that one way out. And there's going to be nowhere for you to escape except the Lord make a way. And the Lord is going to make a way. So I already kind of gave him what's up. I already told him what was going on. Kind of gave him a heads up. And here they are in this situation now. Pharaoh has come and gotten where God said he was going to be. He's He's propped up in the only way of escape. Their back's at the Red Sea, exactly where God told them to be. And they see Pharaoh coming. They see their bondage coming. They see their old man coming. They see their old sin coming. They see their old temptation coming. What God already set them free from. And they said, oh no, here it is again. Oh no, what are we going to do? They lifted up their eyes. And they got their eyes fixed on their past. They got their eyes fixed on the old man. They got their eyes fixed on their problem. What God had already delivered them from. Come on, they were already out of Egypt. They weren't in Egypt right here. They were moving on. And then they started crying out to the Lord. That's the right thing to do, amen? Cry out to the Lord. Yeah, amen. amen? Yeah. Okay. So then we get to verse 11, and it says, in verse 11, they said to Moses, 
because there were no graves in Egypt? Has thou taken us out here to die in the wilderness? If I can translate into American. Were there, was there not enough space for us to be buried all throughout the Egyptian land? Of course, Egypt was huge. There was plenty of room. But was there not enough room? Come on, they were in the millions. There was a, a vast number of these Israelites. Was there not enough room out there that you had to come out here in the woods? You had to come out here in the wilderness. You had to take us some desert place so we could be buried here. What are you doing? You just brought us out here to die. What is going on? Why, this next verse, or this next part of this verse, wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? In other words, why did you even meddle? Why did you even get in our business? Why did you do this to us? What are you doing, Moses? I'm going to go ahead with verse 12 and put that with it. Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt? Saying, leave us alone. Let us be, if I can paraphrase, that we may serve the Egyptians, that we may stay in our sin, that we may stay in our addiction, that we may stay in our bondage, that we may be wrapped up in this world. Leave us alone. Let us be. We kind of have a, a routine here. We understand the routine. Yeah, we're getting beat. Yeah, we're getting killed. Yeah, we have to work all day for next to nothing. Yeah, we're in the hot sun. Yeah, we don't have freedom. But at least we know the routine. Leave us alone. For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. It better be a, better to be a slave to this world. Better to be a slave to sin than to have to go out there into a some unknown place, the wilderness, and risked our life. Mm. Wow. These people, they was... Mm. Now, you got to give them some credit now. They, they were, for hundreds of years, they were slaves. Yeah. It wasn't like it was just something that, that they got into yesterday, that they were children of God, and then they were slaves one day, and then the next day they were like, no, 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 we want to stay slaves. This is how it had gone from generation to generation to generation. Mm -hmm. They didn't know anything, really anything different. If I could put it in terms of, of today's world, this would be a, a, a first generation Christian maybe. This had been somebody that maybe was raised in a home that, that had alcohol and then the grandma drank and then dad drank and now I'm drinking. What's the difference? This is just how it is. Maybe uh, dad got mad and uh, grandma, no, Grandpa got mad. I'll put no men here. You know, women sometimes, they, they what was, but anyways. Granddad got mad and, 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 and beat grandma, and then dad got mad and beat mom, and I, you know, when my wife gets out of order, I, you know, I let her have it. That's just how it is. Ooh, the boy's quiet up in here, I love it. <laughs> it's just how it's always been from generation to generation to generation. Hundreds of years, this is just the way things have gone. So I give them a little credit there, just a smidge. But basically they were ready to give up all hope. They were speaking death, if you would, over these last two verses. They were speaking death. We're going to die out here in the unknown. God has delivered us from our bondage. And you, Moses, it's your fault. You even came and started meddling in our business. And all of a sudden, we're out here in the great unknown. And you're, you're, telling them, you're taking us out here to kill us. This is too hard. This is too difficult. Hmm. Sounds a lot like me. I remember one time. I remember one time uh, I was cutting grass at my house. And I couldn't get the weed eater started. Any room? Any room? I don't know if you remember. Anyways, I couldn't get the weed eater started. And I had been cutting grass for years. And for whatever reason that day, I couldn't get the weed eater started. And I was having myself a little bit of a mental breakdown because I couldn't get it started. And my dad was like, hey, I've shown you what to do. Get it started, cut the grass, you're not coming back inside until you finish. He had done it and it needed to be done. And I was having myself a mental breakdown. 
I couldn't get it going. I choked it, I unchoked it, I checked the gas, I took the, the little cap off the carburetor, I took the filter off, I gave it all kinds yeah. of air, I sprayed stuff in it, I sprayed stuff out of it, I drained stuff, I, I checked the string, I did everything I knew, I let it cool off, I got it back, I let it do everything I knew to do, that thing wasn't starting, and I was done. I'll never be able to do that. I'll have to live outside for the rest of my life. God will never let me in the house. I was having myself break down. Finally, Dad had enough of it, went out there, grabbed it one time, yanked it. Here, start right up. <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea. It doesn't make no sense to me to this day. He went out there, boom, and here, finished that ground. I mean, I had tears in my eyes because look at the leader start. You know what I mean? I was a big old, I mean, look at my son. I was, that boy right there. But, uh, can you imagine crying because you can't get the leader started? I mean, that was a mess. Right? I mean, it was just a mess. I was speaking nothing but death over my situation, and I can only imagine if I would have just stopped, calmed down, even said a prayer. Lord, what have I done wrong? Where am I at this? What, what am I doing? Let me just stop and look at this thing. But I was, I was all focused on the fact that I couldn't do it. I was so focused on the fact that if I didn't get it done, there were consequences. I was so focused on all the problems, all the bad, all the Egyptians, all the sin, all the worry, all the fear. But in that moment, I was, I was useless. I mean, just absolutely useless. This is where they were at. They were speaking that death. They were speaking that fear. They were absolutely useless. Absolutely. Verse 12 says, uh, didn't we tell you to leave us in bondage? Didn't we tell you to leave us alone? Didn't we tell you we didn't want to be messed with? Why'd you bring us out here? Well, I'll give you a little bit of something here. I'll just, I'll just throw this in. This is not, this is, this is extra, but it's free. I'll give it to you. You don't have to. Son, go ahead and jump over here to, uh, to Luke, if you would. See, there's this, there's, this, there's, this, there's this person. There's this person that came. His name is Jesus. Amen. His name is Jesus. Amen. And he came and he, he walked this earth and he told us a few very good things that maybe we want to pay attention to. So, I, I, let me, let me, let me, I want to get down here. My mouth here. Uh, start with verse 16. It says, And he, how about Jesus, came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. Uh oh, that's your hometown. Everybody knows you in your hometown. Everybody knows your past. Everybody knows your mess. Everybody knows your family. Knows your last name. Knows who you are. Knows where you've been. Knows all that junk you did. Woo! Ooh, what a mess. He, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Verse 17 there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was, where it was written. Verse 18. Red letters now. He's reading the Old Testament. But it's red letters because Jesus is speaking it. Oh, it's coming to pass right here. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath set, sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, to uh, the recovery of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. 19 says to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book. And he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them were, that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Amen. He said, I'm the one you're looking for. My name is Jesus. I'm your Messiah. Everything has led up to this moment, and here it is being fulfilled in your hearing, in your ears. Amen. What was fulfilled? Well, let's just real quick look at it. Verse 19 says, The Spirit of the Lord was upon me. Again, me being Jesus. He's talking about himself there. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. And we talked about that Spirit of the Lord last week. We talked about the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge, right? The spirit of the fear of the Lord, right? We talked about all the different things that were in the spirit of the Lord uh, when we talked about it from the uh, offspring of, of Jesse, the root of David, shall come one that sprouts up, and the spirit of the Lord shall be upon him. And we, we went right through it. 
Yes, I remember that. Yeah, okay. Good deal. So he, he proclaims it right here. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. That's the good news, folks. That's the gospel. Amen. That's the gospel. Amen. Number one, first thing, gospel. Amen. Christ came. He died for your sins. He rose again on the third day. You must accept it or else you're not going to get to heaven. But it's a free gift. You can accept it. He'll be your Savior. This is the like the bare minimum of the gospel. I'm, I'm breezing through it here. But there it is. The price has been paid. You can have forgiveness through Jesus Christ. Amen. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Amen. Wow. That's not physical, folks. That's emotional. That's all the emotional pain, the brokenhearted. All the scars that can't be seen. To preach deliverance to the captives. Hey, that's setting people free. Deliverance to the captives. If you're held captive, you're held there against your will, that's demonic. Right there, he just said, I'm delivering people from evil spirits. Amen. I'm setting the captives free. Amen. Oh boy. And recovering of sight to the blind. Well, there's your physical healing right there. Amen. There it is. Recovery of sight to the blind. That seems like something that's just about impossible. And if you read the book, it was, everybody thought it was impossible. Somebody blind since birth, how can he be healed? And then Jesus is like, boom, <laughs> done. Nothing's impossible because I'm Jesus. Yeah, he was, he was awesome. Anyhow, <clears throat> to set at liberty them that are bruised. Now this, this is interesting now. You, you ever get bruised and then no matter how much you go across your day, and you're weak, you'll hit that bruise a hundred thousand times. You ain't hit that spot nowhere, not know how, you're just fine. I ain't touched it, but you get bruised. Oh, that's it, buddy. And if you live in my house, somebody's gonna see it and say, hey, that looks like a bruise, and then they're gonna come touch it. <laughs> so that's just the house I live in. <laughs> Is that a bruise? Mm. Anyhow, that's the house I live in. Can I get an amen, son? Uh -huh. <laughs> Back there shaking his head, he's silent. Set at liberty them that are bruised. That's that stuff that's under the surface. That's that stuff that's just sitting right up there. It didn't, it didn't break the skin, but it's a sore spot in your life. And anytime anything touches it, it makes you take a step back. It makes you, <clears throat> makes you wince. That thing that maybe the preacher talks about on Sunday, you're like, mm, I wish you wouldn't talk about that. That thing that maybe comes up in your in your household and you're married or something, you're like, why you gotta why you gotta go there? Why you gotta talk about that? And because of it, notice it's to set at liberty. That means free. That means you need to be set free from that thing that's laying right up underneath the surface. That that's that thing we just don't talk about in our house, in our marriage, in with our whatever. Well, no. Anytime it ever gets anybody ever gets near it, oh, I got a bruise. Watch out! Don't touch that. Huh. And then go ahead. The next verse, he finishes it off. Remember, we started with the good news, and he finishes to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. He finishes off with the good news with the gospel. That's still the gospel. Christ came so that we may have freedom and that we may have an open door to the throne room of heaven. And this is the day of salvation. Now is the time. Today is the hour. That's what he's trying to say. It is finally acceptable for you to go to Christ, go to the Lord on your own. No more goats, no more bulls, no more blood, nothing. Through Christ, you can have access to boldly go to the throne room of grace and find grace and mercy in your time of need. So it begins with the gospel, it ends with the gospel, and every need you have is found right in between the gospel. Amen. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Wow. So we go over here back to Exodus. And these people, they saw Pharaoh in verse 11 and 12. And they were like, ooh. It's better that we go back to bondage. Mm -mm, that ain't what Jesus just did. Jesus was all about freedom. You understand freedom is a Jesus concept, not an American concept. Jesus had it first. One day later, you'll be hearing the news and you'll get that. Oh, my pastor said it was a Jesus thing. Anyway, 
They were all up in their feelings, all up about their problems, all up worried about their past that was being raised up. And they said it would be better for us to go back in bondage. Come on now, that is, we talked about it this morning, that there's only two people this, that's in this world. The Bible says, the Lord says you're either for me or you're against me. If it's not God's way, then it's against God's way. If it's not Christ's way, it's anti-Christ's way. Come on. I know. We don't want to talk about it. So they're complaining to Moses. They're complaining to God. They're fussing about everything. And we get into verse 13, and I want you to see this. It says, Moses said unto them, I'm back in Exodus chapter 14, verse 13. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. I want to stop right there for a second. We'll finish this verse. <clears throat> you know, when, when things come at you, you get in fight or flight mode. That's what, that's what all the tests and psychologists and doctors and everything say. When something's coming your way, you either stand and fight it or you run. Right. Their past was coming. Their bondage was coming. It talked, I, I can just picture in my mind the top of the, the hill of the wilderness there, and as it's, as it's heading towards them, they say, oh no, we got to get out of here. But if you know, again, the story, as I showed you, there was only one way out, and that's the way Pharaoh and his army was coming, because their back was against the water. So it's not like they could go run somewhere to escape. But Moses has to tell them to stand still, because they're getting ready to go somewhere. They're getting ready to run somewhere. Well, they're not going to run out of the water and drown. I believe the answer is in the, in the verse right before it, where they say it's better, would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die out here in the wilderness. I believe they were literally getting ready to take and run back to the Egyptians and fall at their feet and say, forgive us, take us back as your slaves. We'll come back into bondage. Please just don't kill us and let us die out here. Please don't just bury us out here in the wilderness. They's getting ready to literally go back into their bondage. Mm -hmm. And Moses had to come by and say, stand still. Don't move. Stop. Aren't you glad that God gives us the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad that God gives us his Holy Ghost to speak into our lives right in the midst of that? Oh, right when we're ready to go back into that same old sin, right when we're getting ready to go back into that same old temptation, when the old man raises his head in our minds and in our hearts and we just get all just tore up and all of a sudden we can hear the voice of the Lord say, if you're not, stand still, don't be afraid, don't move. I got this. Kind of reminds me of out in the in the woods when all of a sudden you walk, everybody been walking through the woods with a couple of people, and somebody says, "Hey, man, hold still for a second. You go, "Oh, uh oh, what's on me? Where is it? Get it off! Get it off! Get it off! Get it off! Where is it?" And maybe they saw a snake, or maybe there's a, a bee on your back, or a spider or something dropped down on your on your hat or something, and you're like, "Hey, hold still. Let me let me get that for you." Kind of almost getting ready to happen right here. Moses said, don't be afraid, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. The Lord's getting ready to do it. The Lord's getting ready to wipe it out. The Lord's getting ready to get that spider, that bee, that snake, and move it for you. You just stand still. Just hold it right there. You take off running, I can't help you. Hold it right there. And don't be afraid. Then he finishes it and says, for the Egyptians whom you have seen today, Oh, come on, I need somebody to shout here. For the Egyptians you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. For your bondage that you're so afraid of, that you're seeing today, you ain't going to see it no more. I'm going to give you victory today. I'm going to set you free for real, free, free today. I'm going to put it in a double time. For real, for real? Yeah, for real, for real. Today, Amen. no more. That old man is gone. Today you're going to have freedom. Oh, I believe that's what we were getting around this morning in that altar. Oh, yes. <laughs> so it was like, listen, I'm just going to go ahead and do a little bit of this morning. You can still go preach, but I'm going to shut you. Hey, hey, hey. Get up in here. Praise God. So we, we get to verse 14. Moses finishes, the Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. I don't believe that, that 
Moses was telling them, the Lord's going to do this great thing, and then you're just not going to say anything. Again, you've been in the woods, you know, I had something maybe crawling up your back, somebody says, hey, hold still, and then all of a sudden you feel them, you feel them swipe it off your back, and they say it was a spider, and you say, oh, thank you, I appreciate that. You don't just say, and move on, you speak. I don't believe Moses was saying, the Lord shall fight for you, and he shall hold your pieces, and you will not say thank you, you will not say, I appreciate that, you will not praise your God, you will be silent, and just not even acknowledge what he did. No. No, if you dig around in this in this phrase here, and you shall hold your peace, it's, it's more of a, uh, you're going to be made to be silent. As in, you're going to be in such awe. You're going to be in such wonder and amazement. You're going to be in such, uh, that you're going to be speechless. You're going to hold your peace. You're going to be like, There's, there's, it's going to be so great. And of course, if you know this story, you can understand it is so great. Yes. It is so mighty. It is so awesome. Just the way they're delivered, let alone the way that God then uses that same deliverance to wipe out the enemy. Yeah. To wipe out the past. To wipe out the sin. Come on here. Tell me God can't set you free and wipe away your uh, past at the same time. He said he does. When he says you're forgiven, he parts it as far as the east is from the west. Sets it in the sea of forgetfulness. Never to be remembered again. Come on now. When he frees you, he frees you. It's over. Amen. So we get to 15, and I just love the boldness of God. I just love the bluntness of the Lord. Why are you crying to me for? That's what he says. Give me verse 15 up there, son. That's what he says. And the Lord said to Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me? Question mark. Speak to the children of Israel that they may go forward. Now here's the big deal. Here's the chunk. Here is the piece de response of the message today. The Lord had already set them up for victory. Come on now. Yeah. The Lord already told them, if you, if you read this whole story, you've got to go way back. The Lord had already told them what he was going to do. He already told Moses what the plan was. He already said, all right, children of Israel, turn down there and go down that one-way street where it's a dead-end road, and I just want you to camp down there at that dead-end road and watch. Here's what's going to happen. It's going to look like a dead-end road, but you, you just hang out down there. He, he had an angel of the Lord that went before him. He had a pillar of fire and a pillar of cloud that switched over with the day and night that went with him. I mean, he set them up for 100% total victory, total freedom, total deliverance. And here they are crying out to the Lord in the midst of it all. After he's, he said, I, I've, I've already told you how it ends. I've already told you how to be free. I've already told you the plan. I've already explained to you the salvation and the gospel. What are you crying out to me for? Don't you know the plan? Didn't I already tell you? What's the problem here? I'll put it to you in terms like this, and this, this is going to be this is going to be fun for me anyway. We have the Word of God, and, it, and, and as Christians, we only have one book. There's other religions that have multiple books. You got to read them all to get the whole picture. They kind of dig each other into that. Anyways, but it's man's religion. But as God's religion, as God's way, as God's truth, as God's life, for Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Right? That's all right here in this book. He says things like, try me in this and see if I won't open the windows of heaven. Right? Taste and see that the Lord is good. Put it to the test and see that it doesn't work. It does. Every time. One, we don't read it. As Christians, as churchgoers, come on, we don't read the book. This is our instruction manual, our playbook, whatever. We don't read it. Come on, I've been guilty. It took me until I was 30 to read the Bible. We don't read it. But then, on top of that, we get something in our life, I don't know if that's like a pain. We go see the doctor. We'll do every last drop the doctor tells us. 
He tells us to change our diet. That's it, doc. No more chocolate. I'm done. How come he never says no more kale? You know what I'm saying? No more lettuce. I don't know. But we'll do every last drop that the doctor tells us to do or not to do. We'll change our habits. The doctor says, hey, I, you need to stay away from the sunshine. It's causing you some problems. Don't go out in the sun. Okay, I'm a night owl from here on out. We'll do every last thing. The doctor says, take these pills exactly five hours apart and don't skip them. Don't skip a day. Take it with food. Make sure you have some in your stomach and what, don't operate machinery. Don't. Every last instruction that the doctor tells us to do. And in the end, we kind of go back because over and over and over again, the doctor has been proven wrong. I don't know. Coronavirus, case in one. Vaccine, case in one. That's just the most recent. Over and over and over again, the doctor has made a mistake. But we still put our 100% our faith in exactly what he said. I mean, we'll just we'll change everything. I'll give you another example. Staying on the same kicker. If your prescription medication healed you, you would need a refill. Okay, okay, I'll leave that alone. The doctor helps us, yes. The medicine helps us, yes. But God is our healer. I'm going to the doctor, don't get me wrong, I'm going to the doctor. I take medicine, don't get me wrong. I'm not preaching against that stuff. But we will change our every, everything. Now, honey, I'm sorry, but I can't do such and such and such and such and such because according to the doctor and according to this medicine, I can't do such and such and such and such and such. <laughs> or I gotta eat more than I was eating more times a day for the little bit. I gotta change everything. And then we won't even give God 30 minutes a day to see what he says his word to do. To live by what he says to do. God gave us 10 simple commandments. Right? Come on. He really just swapped it all into one and said, love your neighbor as yourself. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Just love. Just, 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 just love. And yet, won't do it. Won't do it. Here we are with, here we are with the same example of Moses, and I'll, I'll prove my point. Because we're human, and that's, that's really, that's really where it comes down to. We're all fallen, we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Come on. None of us perfect. No, not one. Jesus was the only one that was without sin. Come on. What did, he, what, did he, what did he tell Moses to do in verse 16? He says, but lift thou up thy rod, stretch out thy hand over the sea and divide it, and the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. So if you look back, uh, I've got to wrote down here. Um, that's all right. So go ahead, and, go ahead and give me those old verses. I'm, going, I'm staying with Exodus, but notice this is chapter 7, verse 8. It says, The Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, Show a miracle for you, then you shall say unto Aaron, Take thy rod, and cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a serpent. That was 7, verses 8 9. Go ahead, keep going. Uh, in the same chapter, verse 19, it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying to Aaron, Take thy rod and stretch out thine hand. Hold on, that sounds exactly like what he said here. Uh, but take thy rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea and divide it, and the children go. Anyways, but take uh, um, thy rod and stretch out thy hand over the water of Egypt uh, and the streams and the rivers and the ponds, and it's all going to become blood. Go ahead, do the next one. I, I tried to keep it kind of color coded so you could realize it was going to different verses. Keep going. And the Lord spake, this is chapter 8, verse 5, uh, unto Moses, saying to Aaron, Stretch forth thine hand with thy rod over the streams, over the rivers, over the ponds, and cause frogs to come up upon the land. Go, go ahead, son, let's keep going. Uh, uh, and the Lord said unto Moses, saying to Aaron, Stretch forth thy rod, or stretch out thy rod, and smite the dust, and let it may become lice. <laughs> And verse 8, 16, keep going, or chapter 8, 16, chapter 9, 23 says, And Moses stretched forth his rod for heaven, or toward heaven, and the Lord sent thunder and hail, and fire ran along upon the ground, and the Lord rained hail upon the land of Egypt. Wow, keep going. Uh, verse 10, 
or chapter 10, and Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt, and the Lord brought the east wind all night and all day, and eventually, uh, in the next morning, the east wind brought the locusts. Over and over and over again, God was training them up. God was showing him what to do. God was walking him through it from moment to moment, test to test, trial to trial. And God came through every single time. And he says, hey, what's in your hand? It's the word of God. Use it. Amen. What have I given you? It's the word of God. Use it. God had already given him exactly everything he needed. And here he was with the children of Israel sitting down there at the dead end road. The Lord already told him the plan. Gave him everything he needed to know for victory. Equipped him for everything he needed to have for victory. And then he's like, Lord, save us. The children of Israel, Lord, help us. I can't get the way either started. Help somebody. Here we go, finally the Lord says, what are you crying out to me for? What are you crying out to me for? I've done giving you everything you need to know and giving you everything you need to use so that you can walk in victory. I've even showed you the plan. I'm just telling you to walk in it. Come on. But lift up thy rod. Go back to verse 16 if you would, son. Chapter 14, 16. But lift up thy rod, stretch out thy hand over the sea, and divide it, and the children of Israel shall go on dry ground uh, through the midst of the sea. What does he tell them? What does he tell them? Lift up your rod, then they're going to go. But if we go back to verse 15, why Christ out thou to me, speak to the children of Israel, that they may go forward. Amen. Amen. This is growing up, folks. This is maturing. This is being grown. Go forward. You imagine, ooh, you imagine if they'd have sat right there in their mess, after God gave them everything for the victory, after God showed them everything for the victory, after God planned it out for them, and they were being obedient all the way down that dead end road to the Red Sea, if they at that moment said, ah, it's too hard, which is what they were saying. Let's just go back to Egypt and get back in our bondage, get back in our slavery. This is too difficult, which is what they were saying. But if they had just done nothing, the enemy would have come upon them and killed them. That's right. Yeah. If they had done nothing, Pharaoh's army would have come down there and put a hurt on them. Unless God intervened miraculously, maybe he would have. We don't know. That part of the story didn't happen. We're speculating here. It's all speculation. But God planned a miracle. God set out a miracle. He tells them in verse 15, I just want you to go forward. I just want you to move forward. Yeah. Just walk in. I've given you everything you need for healing. I've shown you how to call upon the name of the Lord for healing. <laughs> it may be a good little stretch of the legs to get from this side of the Red Sea to that side of the Red Sea. Come on, on the first step in the Red Sea, when they were walking across on dry ground, they weren't delivered. On the second step, they weren't delivered. On the third step, they're walking across on dry ground in the middle of these big old walls of water on both sides, still being chased by the enemy. Not delivered. It wasn't until they got all the way to the other side. Then God said, okay, stretch the rod back forth again, call the waters back into its place where it was, and you're going to be delivered. And the people that I promised you that you'd never see again, you're never going to see again. The armies of Pharaoh, the chariots, wiped out. But they had to walk in. Yeah. I have to walk in it. You have to walk in it. God says to the, in one scripture, my grace is sufficient. Yeah, then walk in it. God says in other places, ask me and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. We have to walk in it. <coughs> Those are three different types of searching for the Lord. One's immediate, one's a little bit more longer, and one's a whole lot longer with uh, faith. I'm hoping somebody comes and answers that door on the other side. This is what we call faith, folks. This is what we call growing up. And I, I'm trying to tell you here, I'm trying to show you here 
that God wants to take you from where you are to where he wants you to be. And he's saying the struggles, the mess, the hurt, the everything that you've dealt with all the way up there. They were slaves, folks, for hundreds of years. All the way up until we get you to the other side. I want to free you from that. I want to free you from that bondage. I want to free you from that favor. I want to free you from that past. Yeah, technically you were free when you came out of Egypt with your fist raised and your pockets full of gold and scarlet robes and food. I mean, they left out of Egypt fat, folks. They had all kinds of stuff. They left with their pockets full. The Egyptians were like, here, take it, go, just just go, just please go. Mm -hmm. They left with animals and, and, and the carts and wagons. And Yeah, technically they were free then. Then here comes their past. Here comes their bondage. Here comes the old man. They're roaming through the wilderness. God says, all right, I'm going to set you free. And I'm going to do it in a way that is going to be miraculous. I'm going to do it in a big way. And I've already given you, i use this one, I've already given you everything you need. I've given you Jesus Christ, my son. I've given you the promise of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that says that when he comes upon you, you shall receive power. I've given you my promises to stand on. Now stand you therefore. If you can't do nothing else, stand therefore. Do whatever it is that God's telling you to do. But in this season, in 2023, it may not be the first step. January uh, 29th, 2023, the first step into the part of seas. The first step into the Red Sea being part of they weren't delivered on that spot. Had they not started walking, they had never got to the other side. It may take all of 2023 to get you to the other side of the Red Sea, but I strongly believe God is saying, this year's your year. This is for you. I'm ready to heal the brokenhearted. I'm ready to set at liberty the bruised. I'm ready to free the captives. Come on. Deliver the captives. I'm ready to heal the blinded eyes. To do all the things that need to be done. Emotional healing. Physical healing. Uh, uh, demonic healing. Underlying surface stuff that we just don't talk about. And bruise healing. All that stuff. Ready to leave that behind you. They didn't carry Pharaoh with them. They didn't carry the, the, the chariots with them. Come on. They didn't carry the horses with them. All of their past stayed back on the other side of that Red Sea. Though they were free from the time they left Egypt to the time they got to that Red Sea, they weren't delivered until they got to the other side. Yeah. Come on. Christ has come. I just showed you in Luke chapter 4 to do all that you need to do. He can do all that you need to do. It begins with the gospel, Jesus Christ. He paid the price. He took the stripes. He took our shame. He took our suffering. He took everything and paid the price for it all. And it ends with the gospel. When we get lost, when we get uh, off track, when we get off the straight and narrow, when we fall, when we fail, when we falter, when we mess up, go back to the gospel. Go back to Jesus Christ. Go back to the foot of the cross. That's where you'll find your help. That's where you'll find your salvation. That's where you'll get things back right with the Lord. So this morning, I don't, know, I don't know what your past is and don't need to know. That's between you and God. That's the beauty of God. Amen. You can lay it down. God can part it and it's done. It's over. I don't know what your hurt is. Don't need to know. I don't know what your bruise is. I don't need to know. The point is, Christ can heal it. Christ can fix it. Christ Amen. can set you free. First and foremost is salvation. If you're not saved, if you're not right with the Lord, please get right today. Please come and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Please submit your life to him and say, God, I give, you, I give it all to you. Each and every part of my life, my, my mind, my emotions, my spirit, my, my everything, God, I, I lay it down at your feet. I give it to you. Be my Savior and my Lord. Second off is everything else. 
for all that stuff that we're holding on to. God said, cast your cares on him. That's your burdens, that's your worries, that's your fears, that's your past, that's your everything. Those bricks, that big bag that's heavy that you've been carrying around, cast your cares on him. Amen. We've had a great time already around this whole thing. Yeah. Knowing that God can do it. I'm asking you again. Please come lay it down at the altar. Leave it there. Don't pick it back up. Don't pick it back up. And if you're out there in the world and that old man starts to rear his ugly head again, go back to the gospel. Go back to Jesus Christ and him crucified. Go back to the fact that he already paid the price for your sins. Go back to the fact that he bore the stripes for your healing. Go back to it and walk in your salvation every day. Walk in it. Don't be stagnant. Don't be afraid. Don't let fear grip you and put you in a, a paralyzed state. Walk in it. Go forward, as the word of God says. If you need anything from the Lord, the altars are open. Please come and receive this one. Please come and receive this one.